final video for the day, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, just to warn you, in all fairness, this is a very, very long email. Uh, so unless you really, really like uh, my entertaining reading of things, it's going to be lengthy, and um, just want to be fair with you on that. But this is this is I charge, so I charge. Don't worry, I charge by the hour. I charge a hundred dollars an hour. So if you want me to go and do this for a hundred dollars an hour, I'll do this for an hour. Uh, of course, most video consultations. Just so you, like, I should. Uh, a reader said that I should tell people this. Um, pricing on average, everybody's like, well, that's going to intimidate people. It doesn't take me that long to do an email or a video. So right now, the market, the market rate is 25 bucks for an email response and about 35 for a video. It depends on how <clears throat> complicated it is. This one, very lengthy. Not complicated, but very lengthy. Um, so we write, uh, I'd like you to do a video, blah, blah, blah. I'm a 34-year-old single male, currently unemployed and find myself at an impasse in life. I have a Bachelor's of science, Finance in science, Finance, I know, and an MBA also in Finance, I know. I live in New York City, born and raised second-generation American. My grandparents came through Ellis Island from Italy. I am not a transplant, and given that I am in what is arguably the finance capital of the world, my younger self thought it would be a safe bet for security employment. Oh, you foolish, foolish man. I didn't have much in the way of guidance. I went to a public school and my so-called elders were totally useless. I am a first-generation college student from a lower-middle-class family. My father worked at the same blue-collar job his entire life. <clears throat> my mother has never worked. I've been working in securities regulation for the past seven years. I entered the industry one year before the financial crisis. Since then, my career has resembled the scene from the Indiana Jones movie where Indy is running for his life as the ground crumbles directly beneath him. I got my starting work at an investment advisory firm in their compliance department where I stayed for three years. I had to move on as there were no opportunities for me beyond entry level. I could not survive long term on the pay. The workplace was becoming increasingly hostile and frankly I was being horribly taken advantage of with workloads I was carrying. Yeah, that's, that's finance. That's New York. I don't know. I keep People think you got to not look at the glory and glamour of banking. You just, I know they make movies. It's boring ass work. And it's manip because they they got such a flood of people who are do bro finance majoring guys they you know they just and they do they take advantage of it and anyway uh, I found a job with a major securities regulator on the broker dealer side thinking this would be a good move and a logical career progression it turned out to be hell on earth much worse than where I had been all in all aspects I stuck with that for four long years wow. Essentially spinning my wheels, I was very hesitant to move on during that time due to the abysmal due to the abysmal job market and a fear of getting further sucked in and trapped in my career like my miserable bosses forced to suck cock at meager, meager wages for the rest of my life. Besides that, the future of these industries is not looking too bright at all. You think Wells Fargo out by you is bad. It's Olympic competition brown nosing and scumbaggery here on the East Coast. I am I'm acutely aware of that. In that four years as a regulator, I visited 20 to 30 different security firms of all types and sizes, including the Ivy League cocksucker kind. <laughs> My proudest achievement, making a regulatory relations dude at the most hated investment bank on the planet cry like a little bitch. I'm serious, this actually happened. I will cherish the memory until the day I die. I hope it was Goldman Sachs. I think it's Goldman Sachs. He didn't say. The entire time, all I could think of was, dear God, what have I gotten myself into and how the fuck do I escape it? No matter how much I ruminated on my dilemma, I could not find that silver bullet solution. The daily stress wore on me. I developed horrible anxiety to the point of physically shaking. By this time, I was on doctor pre uh, prescribed meds and to try and control it. Eventually, a position with yet another major securities regulator came along and I thought I'd finally run into a bit of luck as it was a government job paying six figures with a pension. Oh, no. That's, I, uh... When I got there, I discovered it was total shit show. My manager was horribly inept and had the highest turnover at the staff level in the organization nationally, mostly due to her firing nearly all of her hires in an attempt to cover up how bad she was at her job. She was Gen X, not a boomer. Well, don't trust you me. Gen X is coming online now. We are worse than the boomers. I mean, it's just, it is a shit show. Every day I had someone whispering in my ear that I needed to watch my back because she was crazy, unpredictable, etc. Needless to say, this did not help my anxiety levels. One morning, and I still don't know how it happened, I slept straight through my alarm. Well, dude, because you probably burnt out mentally and ended up late for work missing a meeting. 
And what was at this point a bullet sweating panic, I told a white lie that I suppose I did not did not go over well because the next week I was fired. I recognized my part in that, but I was so freaked out and so worn down that I was not thinking clearly at all. I had been there a little over two months, thankfully. <clears throat> I was able to negotiate with HR to retroactively turn my firing to a resignation so I wouldn't have to include a firing on any job applications or ever come up in a background check. I've been out of work a few months now, short term, trying to get something that will keep me on track with my current career to repair my resume as a hedge and get some cash, in, cash coming in. Once that happens, I am immediately going to get back to focusing on getting the fuck out of finance. I've seen too... I've seen too much abuse, amorality, self-serving behavior, and straight up evil. Besides that, if you don't, do not entrench yourself in a mid-level or senior management level position by the age of 40. The industry kicks you around like a stray dog until you eventually get locked out. I've seen this happen to too many men in their 50s. The men, these men have no time to rebuild. If I'm going to be finished in finance, damn it, it's going to be on my terms. I want you and your reviewers to know that everything you have said in your many videos about the finance industry is 100% spot on. Anyone who says you are full of shit can eat mine, can eat mine straight from the chute. I'd be happy to oblige. <clears throat> that follows that for an endorsement, Aaron. Run, don't walk away from your local financial services career if you value your sanity. Though I am out of work, my anxiety levels have decreased dramatically. Oh yeah, that totally happened. I mean, I was not quite to your level, but whenever I'd quit, oh, it was wonderful. Like it was just birds were chirping, and you go smoke a cigar, and it was wonderful. <laughs> This is where you come in. What the hell do I do? I'm lacking direction and have been for some time. The past several years, economic, the past several years, economic climate, <clears throat> and the outlook for the future makes every idea I come up with seem terrible. So many industries are shrinking or dying, and there is little worthwhile replacing them. Even seemingly stable options may not be stable in a few short years. I really don't want to go back to school unless I can do it on the cheap, on the quick, and pretty much guarantee employment. At this point, I cannot afford to fuck this up even more. Help me, Cappy Juan Kenobi. You're my only hope. Uh, this is why I went into computer networking. And seriously, then I got dragged back into banking. And then all of a sudden, like, I know I, know I worked at it, but all of a sudden, boom, my writing career took off and this craziness took off. Um, so I would try computer networking. I mean, seriously, a year of schooling, two years of schooling, and then you take your tests and you can... You're not going to be making tons of money, but it's it's a career. I've been entertaining the idea of going back to school for a real estate master's. No, fuck, just fucking become a realtor. You don't need to fucking go get a degree in real estate. Just get your get your license and try to break into commercial real estate sales. No, just just get your license. And and that shit's all, you, that's just as corrupt as finance. It is funny. I worked on that and I saw those scum fucking banks come in. Look, we got pretty designs of buildings. Read my book behind the housing crash. You'll <clears throat> You'll see these. Fu they're fucking scum. They're fucking scum. Which I could do for about twenty thousand and thirty credits, and there's only ten classes going to night school. Just get your license. Just get your realty license. Don't pay money. No, don't do that. If I earn the degree and can't break into that business, I could still leverage the degree with my current education experience, perhaps working with real estate-oriented financial products. But this is just more of the same. Admittedly, I'm still in the information gathering phase of this potential plan. My biggest problem is that I don't have much exposure to any other areas of work through family, friends, etc. Sometimes I read about people with the most unassuming jobs like elevator repairmen making bank. And all I can think is, where the hell did you discover that you can make doing this? That's like the chimney sweepers. The chimney sweepers make great money. Not that hard to teach it to yourself either. You know as well as I do that our entire generation has led to believe that type of work was a one-way ticket to poverty. That type of work was a one-way ticket to poverty and loserdom. Our education on such options was nil, nay, actively avoided. Really, it was such a social engineering ploy by corporate America and their public sector puppets to flood the labor market with cheap white-collar workers in order to exploit them. Now that they are crumbling under the weight of their own bullshit, they throw us away like garbage, leaving millions to rebuild their lives. It truly makes me sick. Um... Anyway, below I've listed my advantages and disadvantages for you to consider in your evaluation of my potential paths forward. No debt, graduate from both my degree programs, four-year CUNY schools on the cheap. Okay, so you be, I live at home, I've been able to, uh, I can borrow my parents' car the whole, the whole twice a month, I use it. Rent for a crap hole apartment, Come, cost me roughly 50% of that pay, no wife, no kids, good, no exes, good. Good, sort of MGTOW, relatively young and uncut. Good. 
virtually no mandatory degrees, da, 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 da. living in New York City, is that there are far more opportunities of employment here than most other parts of the country. You are so fucking dead wrong. New York, fuck New York. What is with you people? Do you ever cross over into Jersey? Or do you see Jersey say, oh, the rest of the country looks like this, fuck it, I'm going back to New York. You East Coasters have got to get out of New York. You do. New York is a fucking shithole. I mean, it is shit. <clears throat> um, a smart night genius disadvantage of living in da da da. Math skills aren't very strong. Really? All that regular your math skills aren't that strong? Cannot hack intense physical labor. That'd be great physical shit. Remember all that uh, comes over you. Uh, free independently minded. Don't have much weight liquid cash. Okay, look. Here's the deal. Get the fuck out of New York. Okay? Just get the fuck out of New York. Go find a laborer job. New York is like Sweden and Finland and Norway. It costs you... 75% of your money just to survive. There are other places in this country that are much cheaper, much more efficient, and are going to be much more sane. I've been looking at Texas, Florida. I've gone through this all the time. Some no-tax states. Um, you just got to get out, man. You've got to get out because what the finance world is telling you is what it told me. Get the fuck out of here. We don't want you. You're not going to make it in the finance world. You're not going to make it in commercial real estate sales. You're not anything to do with finance and banking where the fucking scum buckets are. You're not going to do well in <clears throat> because they're going to sniff you out. They're going to fear you because you're going to blow them up or expose them. You have got to get out of there. I would seriously go on Craigslist tonight, find a warm, cheap town, and just start applying to positions that you can take. I don't care if it's physical labor. I don't care what. Go to some town where there's a community college nearby and just find a job. Get out. And you know what? You don't have to be gone for years. You just have to be gone for six months to see that there is more to this country than the armpit of the United States, and that's New York City. They've got an armpit over in New York City. we got another armpit called California. All right? Those places suck for anyone. I, and, and, and you got, I mean, I know the family lives there. You got, get out. So, yes, develop a plan. Going to community college, learn to become a chimney sweeper, something. It's going to be better than going to another fucking regulation, another fucking meeting and commuting, all this other bullshit you got to do. Get yourself a trade or a skill. Find a community college you want to go to and find it in a town that's in a Republican, no-tax state with a reasonably sized population so you have some culture but not the fucking megalopolis shithole that New York City is. Don't go to Chicago. Don't go to fucking Minneapolis. Don't go to Philadelphia. Don't go to LA. Don't go to California. Go Denver. Go Phoenix. Go Dallas. Go Florida. Any place down there is very populated all over along the coast. Find a community college. Find a program that you think you're going to be okay at. Find a job there, no matter what it is, preferably a security guard, something to make the ends meet. Get your training, get your certification, and then start it, start applying for career positions in your new career. And it doesn't matter what it's going to be. Make it work for you. But yeah, dude, you've got to get out of finance. The other thing I think about, Dawn, <clears throat> you have so much experience. I would set up a website and start consulting and be kind of like me. Um, approach banks. I mean, I've tried to approach banks and, and do my own advising. Maybe you'll have better luck with it. But if you have this, fuck you, I know exactly what you're doing kind of attitude. It's amazing how much further you go. Um, with us. So you, you can maybe try and hold on to that and maybe, you know, set up a website and offer you to set up an email. So it's like what, maybe a thousand dollars a year max for hosting costs and, and programming. But yeah, dude, just start all over. Start thinking where you want to live, like environmentally. I'm talking climate, mountains, no mountains, water, no water, desert, trees, figure it out. Start looking on the internet. That's what you, you should spend the next week on the internet every night, looking at pictures of different places you want to live, and then find yourself a community college and a, you know I don't know um, geology, South Dakota School of Mines, something. What do you want to do? All right, this is high school version 2.0 all over again, and then go do it. And that's it. That's all I can recommend because I can't tell you what to do in life. You're gonna have to figure that out. You know your personal tastes and preferences. But I'll tell you this: it ain't finance. It is not finance. <laughs> I know a bank in Wyoming that's desperate. They might hire you. <laughs> Expect the same bullshit, but from even dumber people. That's <laughs> but yeah, get out of New York and don't ever go back to finance. Never. It's, it's so much better out here, guys. It really, it is so much nicer. Um, 
it, it's just it's just great. Of course, you know my job's pretty easy. But yeah, whatever it is, my computer networking was way better. I enjoy working on computers. I enjoy programming way more. Um, it, it just just get out of finance. It's it's probably even worse than than government employees. Seriously. So I wish I could tell you something specific to do. I can't. I could just tell you leave New York, find some new place new. That's it. Best of luck to you. Toodles.